What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder, where we talk all things Marvel and MCU. I'm your host, Warren Thompson, and I know everybody's wondering where that first teaser trailer is for Thor Love and Thunder. There are a lot of rumors going around right now about when it could possibly drop, but today we're really going to break it down to figure out when exactly this trailer should be coming. Now, rumors have it that it is coming this month, which makes a lot of sense. We have the entire month of March left for the trailer to arrive. And we're getting pretty dang close to that July 8th release date. So we're actually going to do some math and figure out when other teaser trailers released and how many days before the actual movie's release date they came out. Then we have to talk about Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds has promised a Deadpool 3 update very soon. And of course, with all the rumors about him appearing in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness going kind of crazy right now, the timing of all of this is pretty coincidental. I'm thinking Deadpool is going to be appearing in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but again, I'll break it all down in this video. And of course, if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest Marvel news. So as of right now, we have 126 days until the premiere of Thor Love and Thunder on July 8th. And in case you're not watching this video on the day I put it out, today is March 4th. So 126 days from March 4th. Now, by previous Marvel standards, we should actually already have the teaser trailer. This is actually the longest that we've had to wait for a teaser trailer, with the exception of Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home's trailer came out 116 days before the release of the actual film. Now, the only thing that is the exception to this is The Incredible Hulk. That actually came out 93 days before the movie released. But that was such a long time ago, and for the most part, people kind of don't really count The Incredible Hulk movie. So we won't really count it either for our purposes in this video. And as far as Spider-Man No Way Home's release date was concerned, and the release of the trailer, obviously there were some major spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home, and they were doing whatever they could to keep those spoilers a secret, so that's why they didn't release the teaser that far in advance from the movie's release date. Now, the Direct.com did some math and they figured out the average amount of days that were between the very first teaser trailer of Marvel films and their actual release date, and that average is 169 days. So Marvel Studios typically releases a teaser trailer for a film 169 days before the movie's official release date. That means... Thor Love and Thunder being at 126 days before the movie's release, that means we're overdue for the trailer. But not by that much. For example, they released the first teaser trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness 135 days before the actual release. So right now, Thor Love and Thunder is only about 9 days late so far. And I do personally know that it was really hard to film Thor Love and Thunder because of the pandemic. I actually met Taika Waititi and got to talk to him at the Eternals premiere. I told him I was really excited about Thor Love and Thunder and his response to me was, yeah, I hope I can finish filming it sometime soon. And that was in September. Now that's plenty of time to finish a film and create a teaser trailer, but not if there were reshoots and perhaps some other problems that arose due to the pandemic. I don't really know anything more than what he told me, but of course finishing the filming of the movie would have an effect on the teaser trailer. However, I'm pretty sure they're finished with the trailer or they're about to be finished with the trailer. Right now, rumors are going around, and they're just rumors at the moment, but they're going around that we're going to be getting the trailer this month, and I would say the same. Because in 10 days, there will only be 116 days left until the release date, and that will tie with the teaser trailer release for Spider-Man No Way Home, and we'll only be about halfway into the month. If it goes past that, this will be the shortest amount of time between the actual teaser release and the actual release date for the film. And although I know Thor Love and Thunder is going to be super epic, it definitely doesn't have as many rumors and secrecy surrounding it that Spider-Man No Way Home did. So I'm guessing, and it is somewhat of an educated guess based off of all of this math and the numbers that we just did, that we will indeed be getting the Thor Love and Thunder trailer this month. I mean, if we don't get it this month, that's only four months until the movie releases. That's typically when we're getting an actual full trailer, or maybe even a second trailer. But fingers crossed that we don't have to wait that much longer for it. And now on to Deadpool, Wade Wilson, the merc with the mouth who is coming to the MCU. 
Now, for those of you who are not aware, Ryan Reynolds himself is writing Deadpool 3 with the Molyneux sisters. Now, at one point in time, Ryan Reynolds came out and said that he was taking a break from filmmaking. And of course, a lot of us freaked out because we're like, oh dang, Deadpool 3 is going to be on hold. But then a while ago, Kevin Feige came out and said that Deadpool 3 does have a release date. He said this in an interview with comicbook.com. And not too long after Ryan Reynolds announced his break, he did say that he is indeed still working on Deadpool 3 which was great news. And very recently, he said that he's going to have an update for us very soon. So it seems like Deadpool 3 and his entrance into the MCU is coming along pretty nicely. And here's where I question the timing of this all. It looks like we're going to be getting an update for Deadpool 3 around the time that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is going to be coming out. And to me, this is a little bit too much of a coincidence, especially if you consider all of the rumors about Deadpool being in Multiverse of Madness. Now, of course, Ryan Reynolds himself has been asked if he's going to be in the film, and he has denied it, but of course, everybody denies it. I think we all remember what happened with Andrew Garfield until Spider-Man No Way Home came out. <laughs> that is an unfair framing. <laughs> um, it was, uh, yeah, I lied to people for a good two years, and uh, I lied to the internet for two years, and it felt great. So we can't really trust him when he says, no, I'm not in the film, and that's not his fault, he just can't say. But the latest rumors and speculation have it that Ryan Reynolds is going to be entering the MCU through Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. That's how he gets inside our universe from the Fox universe. And I've been talking about this for a while because I think it makes perfect sense. I think it's the best opportunity. Plus, not to mention, they're actually already doing this. They're doing it with other Fox characters. Patrick Stewart's Professor Xavier is entering the MCU via Multiverse of Madness. And in case you missed it, Patrick Stewart did confirm that he is in Multiverse of Madness. That was his voice and that was the silhouette of him. And it's just the perfect opportunity. A film where you're exploring different universes is a perfect way to bring somebody in like Deadpool. Now, you might have heard me say this before, but I think the perfect way to bring Deadpool in is if he randomly stumbles across a new universe and he kind of just runs away. I can just imagine Deadpool doing his thing. All of a sudden, a portal opens up to a different universe. Of course, he's going to be curious about what that is. It's Deadpool. So naturally, I would assume he would go through the portal in which he would most likely encounter somebody else or maybe not. Either way, I think it results in him staying in that universe, whether that's him encountering Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange explains everything and Deadpool just simply runs away, or he goes into the universe by himself and decides to stay there. And not to mention, he was hanging out at the X-Mansion at the end of Deadpool 2. If some of these Fox X-Men are being pulled into the universe, it would make sense that he would be there and be a part of that as well, in which from there I'm assuming he would run away. If he's introduced in Multiverse of Madness to the MCU, which I think is the perfect opportunity, and if they didn't do it, a missed opportunity, I really do think it's going to be about him discovering that his universe, the Fox universe, which I believe he'll call the Fox universe because he can break the fourth wall, is not as good as the MCU, in which then he'll decide that that's the universe that he wants to stay in, the MCU, and no matter how he goes about staying, whether that's fighting somebody or simply running off, I believe he's going to stay. But let me know what you think about all of this in the comments down below. When do you hope we get the teaser trailer for Thor Love and Thunder? I'm assuming that's today or tomorrow's what you hope. And what do you think about Deadpool making his entrance to the MCU in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest Marvel news. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.